Okay. Today's speaker is Irina Gelbuch, and she will talk about how the rip graph of a smooth function encodes the class of the function and the type of the manifold. And also, uh, Irina, I have a question. Are you okay with being interrupted uh, by question during the talk, or do you prefer asking question at the end of the talk? Oh, and that... anyway, anyway. And, okay, it's okay. Okay. So it doesn't mm -hmm. okay. Then please go ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for the invitation and for introduction. I am topologist. Uh, so my research lies in the field of pure math, and I'm not very uh, good at applications. But uh, I hope that this theory um, can be useful in practical tasks. Uh, one moment. Oh. Sorry, one moment. Uh -huh. I know that computer science mostly deal with Morse functions, and it makes sense since the rib graph of Morse functions are the most studied. Moreover, the rib graph in this case is a finite graph. Uh, we will see what structure such a graph has, since not every graph can be uh, the rib graph of a Morse function. For example, a cycle graph cannot. We'll also see what structure have the rib graphs of uh, most bot functions. Uh, generally, the rib graph of a smooth function need not be a finite graph. We'll see a couple of examples, but even in the case when it is not a finite graph, it has a very nice topological structure. It is a one-dimensional piano continuum. We will also see how the structure of the rib graph of a smooth function is related to the type of the manifold. Uh, as you know, rib graph was introduced by George Rip in 1946 as a quotient space. Uh, he considered uh, only simple Morse functions on closed manifolds. Uh -huh. uh, it is more correct to say rib graph, since in French, rib is rib, Georges rib. But I'm used to, <laughs> to say rib, sorry. Uh, so he noted that in this case for simple Morse function, this space is a one-dimensional CW complex or a finite graph with multiple edges. And this fact is used in all modern applications of the rib graph. There are lots of papers on application and uh, significant contribution was made by computer science. Only recently has been uh, research on the topology of the rib graph has begun. Uh, first, uh, definition. We consider a smooth function, any smooth function, on a manifold. Uh, two points of this manifold are equivalent if they lie in the same connected component of a level set of the function. By definition, the rib graph is the quotient space under this uh, equivalence relation and out with the quotient topology. There are also special points of the rib graph called vertices. They are connected components that contain critical points of the function, uh, images of the connected components uh, containing critical points. So, the rib graph is a quotient space with marked vertices called uh, with marked points called vertices. Um, this is a classical example: uh, the height function on a torus, uh, and its rib graph 
in many cases, the rib graph is indeed a finite graph. Uh, we can see that the vertices of the rib graph are images of critical level sets here. Also, the function on the manifold defines a function on the rib graph, if it is a finite graph. And uh, so it defines an acyclic orientation of the graph. Uh, but uh, so by definition, the rib graph is a quotient space and uh, a finite graph is a one dimensional CW complex. What does it mean that the rib graph has the structure of a finite graph? This means that they are homeomorphic and uh, this homeomorphism maps vertices of the rib graph bijectively to vertices of the finite graph. We will say in this case that uh, they are isomorphic or just the rib graph is G. Uh, we know that um, the rib graph of a simple most function or a simple most bot function uh, has the structure have the structure of a finite graph. But generally, the rib graph is not a finite graph. It can be ill behaved, behaved even for very good functions. We consider the Euclidean plane without origin. It is a manifold and a smooth uh, function that is the projection onto the y-axis. All level sets of this function are connected except the zero level. The zero level set has two connected components. So the rib graph is the line with two origins, or also called bar guide line. This is not a graph. It is uh, even non Hausdorff here locally. And the problem, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the problem is uh, that the manifold is not compact. But even for a compact manifold, um, one moment, ah, yes. Even on a compact manifold, uh, here we can see the a torus with coordinates, co coordinates x, t, and a function dependent only on t. Uh, this, is, this is the torus, its uh, edges, these edges are glued together. And this is the function um, on, on t. It has uh, an infinite number of critical points uh, accumulated near zero. Uh, all its level sets uh, are connected. So the rib graph of this function is a circle, but it has an infinite number of vertices because there is an infinite number of uh, critical uh, level sets. So it is not a finite graph. In this case, the problem is that the function has an infinite number of critical values. And um, it turns out that uh, these are only two conditions, bad conditions. Um, Seki so proved a criterion that uh, the rib graph of a smooth function has the structure of a finite graph if and only if the function has a finite number of critical values. 
This theorem makes it possible to work with a wider class of functions than Morse or Morse both functions and to study these functions using graph theory. Uh, but uh, even if the rib graph uh, is not a finite graph, it has a very nice structure. Uh, namely, uh, the rib graph of a non constant smooth function on a closed manifold is a one dimensional piano continuum. Uh, that is homotopy equivalent to a finite graph. In particular, it is Hausdorff one dimensional and its first Betty number is finite. Uh, it is quite similar to a finite graph. Uh, there is a well known upper bound on the first Betty number uh, of the rib graph. It is bounded by the first beta number of the manifold, but this bound is not tight. Uh, there is a beta bound. Uh, the first beta number of the rib graph is um, bounded from above by the current of the fundamental group of the manifold about the current, I will say in the next slide. Uh, and uh, so this inequality is tight. On a given manifold, there exists a function with equality. Uh, for simple most functions on a surface, uh, this uh, inequality was proved by Colin McLaughlin and others. Uh, how uh, recently uh, Michal Michalak uh, found how to choose a function with the equality. And this is uh, an interesting method to calculate the rank of the fundamental group because it is not easy in some cases. So what is the rank? The rank of a finitely generated group is the maximum rank of its free quotient group. Since our manifold is compact, its fundamental group is finitely generated, we can say about the crank of the fundamental group. For manifolds of small uh, dimensions, uh, there are special names. For a closed orientable surface, the crank of the fundamental group is called genus. For three manifold, it is called the cut number. It is not known that the crank is um, uh, bounded from above by the first better number of the manifold. Uh, there are examples illustrating this inequality. Uh, for a n-dimensional torus, the crank is one, the first Betty number is N. For orientable surface of genus G, uh, the current is G. The first Betty number is 2G. These are values for non orientable surface of genus G. Uh, so we have uh, finished uh, the first part of the talk about the problem how the uh, how the rib graph is related to the structure of the manifold. And Arena, could I could I ask a question? Yes, of course. Oh, sorry. So if you um, go to the example of the torus um, on the on the last slide, so. Um, you know, pi one, the problem is pi one of the torus is z cross z, which is abelian. So the, the largest free quotient group I could get is just z. Um, because if I try to add in more generators, then it's no longer free. I, I get these commutivity relations. Is that right? Uh, 
uh, sorry, I didn't understand. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to walk through the example of the two-dimensional torus um, oh, and, and try to understand the co-rank. Um, so, so the co-rank is, is one because I have Z as a free quotient group. Um, yes. But I can't make it any larger because the generators would commute. Yes, yes. Okay. This, okay. this, this is true. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Sorry for the interruption. Uh -huh. So, uh, this, uh, this inequality uh, on the first bit number of the rib graph and the current is um, shows the their relation, but how the rib graph is related to the manifold. And now we will consider this second problem, uh, how the rib graph is related, uh, how the rib graph of a function is related to the class of this function. We will consider most functions and most both functions. Since these functions has a finite number of critical values on a surface or on a closed manifold, sorry, uh, their rib graphs are finite graphs. And we will study how the structure of this finite graph is related to the class of the function or given some graph, some graph, uh, can this graph be uh, the rib graph of a MOS function, of a MOS bot function? This is called also the realization problem in a given class of function. Uh, to begin with, we consider smooth functions. So is any finite graph the rib graph of some function? No, uh, the answer is no, since the rib graph defines, uh, has an acyclic orientation as we have seen above. So uh, a finite graph, the corresponding finite graph has no loops or loop edges that are edges uh, adjacent to one vertex. And this is the only condition. There is a criterion that uh, a finite graph is the rib graph of a smooth function, if and only if this graph has no loops. Uh, in case of uh, uh, some class of function, some special class of function, uh, this imposes additional conditions on the graph. Uh, for example, uh, most functions. Uh, this, uh, it has maxima and minima that are points. So sources and sinks of, the, of its rib graph uh, have degree one. Uh, the question is, if we have a finite graph without loops, with at least two vertices of degree one, can this graph be realized by a Morse function? Two vertices, one for minimum and one for maximum. But uh, again, the answer is no. This is a counterexample. This small graph um, was considered by Charcot. This graph, is not the rib graph of any MOS function or even MOS bot function. Why? We'll see. There is a criterion that uh, a finite graph is the rib graph of a MOS function if and only if this graph admits an acyclic orientation with all sources and thin sinks of degree one. Uh, but uh, why? Why this? 
graph, this Charcot graph, uh, does not admit such an orientation. So I want to um, relate uh, the structure. Irina? Ah, uh, yes. It seems that there is a question from Bay Wan. Hi, uh, sorry for interruption. I was just wondering, are you allowing, when you say the graph is the um, uh, rib graph of some function, what is the assumption on the underlying manifold? Like, can I use any manifold? Because technically I could construct any, some interesting manifold and I have a function on it that give rise to this graph. Is there any constraint over the domain of the function f? Uh, we can see the closed manifolds only closed manifolds. Uh, and then there's no assumption smooth. over the dimension either? Uh, any dimension. Okay. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to relate the structure of a graph with its possible orientations. First, some definitions from graph theory. Uh, a cut vertex, its removal increases the number of connected components of the graph. The Charcot graph has two cut vertices, this and this. By connected graph, it is connected and without cut vertices. Block of a graph is a maximal by connected subgraph. The Charcot graph has four blocks. Uh, three blocks are small, like closed intervals, and one block is big, this one. Leaf block is a block with at most one cut vertex of the graph. Blocks are attached to each other at shared vertices. They are cut vertices of the graph. So only these, uh, only this uh, central block contains two cut vertices. All other blocks are leaf blocks. So this graph has three leaf blocks. Now the uh, criterion. We consider most functions on a closed manifold of any dimension. But generally, the, this theorem is uh, true for a function with critical, with finite critical set, with finite number of uh, critical points. Uh, so uh, a graph is the rib graph of a most function on a closed manifold, if and only if the graph is finite, has no loops, and all its sleeve blocks are closed intervals, or K2, that is a complete uh, graph and two vertices. Uh, the Charcot graph has one bad lip block, too big. But this criterion uh, gives a receipt how to make this graph realizable by a Morse function. We add to bad. Uh, block, a uh, closed interval, this in such a way. So now this uh, subgraph is not a leaf block and all its leaf blocks are closed intervals. This graph can be realized by a Morse function. Uh, so <laughs> rip graph of a Morse function resembles a cactus. All its live blocks are needle, are needles like here. And now we consider more spot functions on a closed manifold, or more generally, functions with finite number of critical submanifolds. As an example, we consider uh, a torus uh, like a donut line on the table, and the height function. It has one minimum that is a circle and one maximum that is also a circle. And all other uh, critical 
or no, not Greek, all other level sets, sorry, have, uh, have two connected components, big one and small one. So its sweep graph is a cycle graph on two vertices. Uh, since uh, Morse functions uh, uh, is a subset of the set of Morse board functions, uh, the following the a theorem is a generalization of the theorem ab about uh, Morse functions. Uh, so, a graph G is the rib graph of a Morse board function on a closed manifold if and only if uh, the graph is finite, has no loops, and each its sleeve block has a vertex of degree at most two or two such vertices if the leaf block is an untrivial connected component of the graph. Uh, for the case of this graph, Charcot graph, again, we have one bad leaf block that uh, does not contain vertices of degree one or two. But it is easy to do it realizable by Morse. What function it is, we, we can subdivide any of its edges uh, by a vertex of degree two, like here. And now this graph is realizable by a Morse, uh, by a Morse board function. And we see that both these graphs are homeomorphic. Uh, Morse board functions play a special role in the rib graph theory because any finite graph is homeomorphic to the rib graph of a Morse board function. And this is true even for a graph with loops. We can subdivide any loop by a vertex of degree two. Like here, this graph cannot be the rib graph of any function. And this is the rib graph of, of a most board function. Uh, for small graph, we can see at a glance whether a graph has such a structure compatible with more so more both functions for larger graphs there is an there is a fast algorithm namely it is possible to compute whether graph has a structure compatible with more or more both function in time and space of the order of the number of edges of the graph so conclusion um, we have seen that the rib graph of a smooth function need not be a finite graph, but even in this case, when it is not a finite graph, there is a, an upper bound on the first number, a tight, a tight uh, uh, upper bound on the cycle rank of the rib graph. And uh, also, uh, we know that the rib graph is a finite graph if and only if it has a finite number of critical values. In particular, rib graphs of Morse and Morse word functions are finite graph, graphs. Uh, the structure of these graphs is the following, leave blocks. Uh, in case of Morse functions are closed intervals and leave blocks in, in the case of Morse board functions contain vertices with degree one or two. Uh, and that is all, these are references. If uh, somebody want to see references or some details, uh, this uh, presentation will be on the research gate. Thank you. That's all.
Thank you. Okay, I think it's time to unmute ourselves and thanks, Irina. Okay, uh, I think we have a question from uh, Wokmo. Please ask questions. Yeah. Last one. And by the way, eh, <laughs> but you, you don't know. I would like only add and remark because it was a very nice question about uh, the problem of realization. So this problem has <laughs> several sub questions. Namely, you can ask about the realization a given red graph in as a red graph of a function on any manifold but if you restrict i mean put more uh, strict question maybe you have given manifold and ask whether there exists a function which red graph uh, gives you given graph then uh, the answer is more complicated and needs more dedicated topological tools especially if you also additionally put the assumption that you require your function to be the Morse function. And also, uh, the realization of the graph can be done in three different uh, steps of exactness. One is up to homotopy number of loops, second, up to homomorphism, and second, the most precise, namely up to combinatorial equivalence, in which the, uh, the a vertices of um, of degree two are important because you 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 at the finally you have to have combinatorial uh, equivalence of the graphs and so this is why you have several uh, papers several publication which give you answers to particular sub questions of this general question of realization. This is what everything what I wanted to say. Thank you. Uh, I want to add that uh, the problem of uh, realization of a graph in the class of smooth functions was um, on a given manifold. Yes, it is a more complicated problem. It was. Um, considered by Saeki, and he showed that um, a finite graph can be realized on a, as the rib graph of a smooth function on a given manifold if and only if uh, um, this inequality on the first Betty number of the Rib graph and the Karang is uh, takes place. It is if this inequality is true for this rib for this graph and for this uh, manifold, then this graph can be realized as the rib graph of uh, uh, of a smooth function on a given manifold. This is a recent uh, result by Saeki. <laughs> I, I didn't uh, tell about this <laughs> because uh, the time is very to, to, uh, <laughs> there, there was not sufficient time for this. I tried to uh, be in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the case of uh, in the case of uh, realization on a given manifold uh, as the rib graph in the class of Morse functions, it was um, the result was proved by Michalak, uh, but. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, this was up to homeomorphism, not isomorphism. But yes, there are results in the class of most functions and in the class of most both functions. And uh, in both cases, uh, this, uh, this inequality with the current 
is important. Any other questions? Uh, yes, I have a, a question. Mm -hmm. So I may ask. Uh, uh, regarding the example of uh, uh, before that you add a uh, vertex and then you, you can realize that uh, as a read graph, uh, that uh, corresponds like um, adding some uh, critical point uh, in some sense. So I imagine uh, uh, that uh, maybe you have some kind of a surface that is not a surface, but then you add, uh, I don't know, like uh, maybe a, a handle or something, and and then you are able to define a smooth function there and with an extra critical point. Do you know that, uh, such an example, or maybe I just uh, say nonsense? That's the, the question. Or, or do you know if, uh, I, how can I visualize that in the, the, the this phenomenon of, of adding a vertex? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. No, oh, okay. Um, I don't, maybe it was um, uh, a good question. Um, but uh, in, in summary, uh, how, how would you explain this um, behavior of adding a vertex and know it, it is uh, real? Like, uh, no, you can realize the 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 grip graph, the red graph. No. Uh, I don't understand. What is the question? What? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's regarding your your example or. Maybe I you know, can you uh, the, the the example of adding uh, a vertex in, in the graph that you you couldn't uh, realize that and then you add a vertex and you make ah. it real, realizable. Ah, this example, yes. Uh, yeah. uh in the class of most both functions yes yes, yes that, that's right uh -huh. so my question is uh what is uh in the topology of course there is no such a function from there is no such a, a, a manifold for for the left but uh if it were it should look like something like it's missing something I imagine, I don't know. But uh, my question is exactly that. If there is something like that, that like mm, some kind of manifold that is not a manifold, but once you add the point in, in the right, it becomes uh, uh, a manifold. And then you, you, you could define the, the, the smooth function. No? Okay. Uh, this, it's, Maybe uh, very. It's just a thought that uh, I have. Uh, this um, in this case in this theorem, um, mm -hmm. uh, we construct the manifold. It is not given. Uh, there is not such a theorem now on a given manifold. But uh, for this graph, we can construct. A manifold uh, such uh, and a fun uh, and the most both functions on this manifold uh, having such uh, rib graph. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Okay. So the uh, this problem is only for a given class of functions. This for Morse both functions, and the manifold is not fixed. Now, now we have have no result on a on a given manifold. Sorry. Okay. Th thanks. It I'd like to uh, 
ask another question. Um, thanks for the really nice talk. Um, ha, uh, have you or others studied these realization questions for Reeb spaces, where you look at maps maybe to R2, for example, and instead of maps to R? No, only for functions. But I think it uh, must be similar. I think so. Thanks. And I think Bay has a question too. Please go ahead. Yes, um, I'm actually really interest, interested in knowing, you know, given we do have time to to have some high level idea of how to how to construct uh, the Morse uh, the Morse or Morse but function and the manifold from the graph. For example, the picture you showed on page the current page on the right lower right hand. Uh, that there is, you say that there exists a uh, closed manifold such that um, it give rise to this graph uh, <laughs> with a proper chosen function. So I'm I'm really curious, what is sort of, is there like exists a construction? Um, the reason I'm, maybe I'll put a little bit more context because if I think about the rib graph with a height function on a torus, you know, it gives this nice loop and uh, two little sticks. And then the sort of the very tempting effect is to say, well, let me put a height function on this graph and kind of thicken the graph uh, that give rise to my original torus. Uh, so I was wondering, you know, if you could give, give a little bit more detail of how to find this. I mean, it feels like there's this sickening idea of thicken the graph and mm -hmm. make it into a manifold. It seems very tempting. And I was wondering what are, you know, the actual algorithm to find the manifold uh, function pair that give rise to this graph. Uh, yes, in case of Morse, Morse functions, uh, this exactly, uh, this manifold is exactly the thickening of the graph. Uh, and locally, each uh, uh, vertex uh, looks like, uh, Bardism of from Moss theorem. So these are spheres. These are Bardism. <laughs> In case of uh, Moss both functions, uh, this is um, also uh, uh, thickening, but um, a little more complicated because. Uh, one moment. Uh, one moment. Where is it? Ah, here. Uh, uh, because this graph is uh, is not uh, at a glance a thickening, uh, but uh, uh, we have two. Uh, two cylinders, each edge is like a cylinder, cylinder, like a cylinder. This is a, this big one. And this is a, a smaller cylinder that are glued on the uh, critical level. So, in a sense, uh, this is also a thickening of a graph, since to um, to each edge we we can uh, we construct a n-dimensional cyl cylinder um, for each edge, and then we'll try to uh, glue them according to the according to the graph structure yeah that in, makes sense in fact i have uh, this construction in one of my papers but uh, not in this presentation uh, this paper one moment uh, this was paper on Morse board. Oi. Uh, on Morse board, round functions. Uh, 
uh, here realization of a graph as the rib graph of a Mosbot or a round function. Uh, here you can see the construction in for n-dimensional uh, case and uh, many <laughs> pictures <laughs> that is uh, that is good. And this uh, presentation will be uh, on the research gate. So you can see the pictures in this uh, paper, right. realization so of a graph. Yeah, thanks. Any more questions? If not, let me stop the recording.